Welcome back to My Mom's Basement. It is Robbie Fox, and I am here with Taylor Acorn. You have the Certified Depressant EP out now. You also have mm -hmm. a song called Basement coming out on I Friday. Do. Yeah, I didn't know. fitting, right? <laughs> yeah, being on this show meant that much to you. Before we get to all of that, I do want to give you props. You might be the first musician to ever be early for a morning interview. No way. That is shocking. You got in oh. at 2 a.m. last night. You were early for a 10 a.m. interview. You tell a singer 10 a.m., they act like it's 6 a.m. Listen, I, I give it credit to my tour manager because she's very punctual. <laughs> if it wasn't for her, I probably might have been a little late, but she she keeps me it was accountable. very impressive when i heard <laughs> you were here you. early i was like what no that, that can't be right nobody's here early um i do want to go back to the beginning for a second mm -hmm. i know that might be annoying no, but i good. feel like you burst onto the scene in pop punk mm -hmm. over the past few years you've been everywhere mm -hmm. how did this project all start what is the inception of this project um i think it was really just a long time coming i mean i i was a country artist for a few years but I grew up listening to primarily like pop punk and rock music and grew up on like the early like 90s rock and you know I think when I started getting interested in becoming an artist and like started becoming interested in like playing music and writing music I, I wanted to write like pop punk music pop rock music but at the time um, I think like that genre it just it wasn't like a I don't want to say it was like a dying breed at the time. It wasn't like but it is now. Yeah. It wasn't like it is now, even though in like I believed it was, you yeah. know. Um, but I just, you know, did the country thing for a while and realized like I'm not happy doing this. I need to focus on the things that make me feel good, which was like this genre of music. And so, um, you know, we just started writing like piece by piece. Um, we wrote Certified Depressant and then... From then on, we just kind of... Was that the first one? Yeah, that was the first one. And then um, from then on, we just kind of honed in and finished writing their little record that is now certified to present. Did you find similarities like going from country to pop punk in the songwriting styles? Because I feel like even some of the like country artists that are popping right now that are mm -hmm. at the top of the scene have very like emo vibes. And yeah. there's very like similar songwriting styles to me, structures and stuff. Yeah, I, I really do. I think both genres are very much um, like based off of the storytelling of it mm -hmm. um, and the emotional side of it too. Um, and I think a lot of it just has to do with production. I really do think that you could probably take any country song and turn it into a pop rock yeah. song or like a ballad or something like that. Um, Have you seen, uh, is it Alex Melton? Yeah. Who he does like the uh, Y'all the Small Things covers yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he does like yeah. all the alternative stuff, which was really interesting because when I s did start doing the TikToks on, um, and like, you know, doing the little covers and everything, um, I was really shocked to see how many country fans were like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for somebody to do this for yeah. the longest time. But like, you know, they're, it was just not a popular yeah. thing, you know? It's crazy. So, yeah. Um, who were your biggest inspirations when you started doing the pop punk stuff? Oh gosh, I have so many. Um, well, vocally, not necessarily pop punk, but I am super, super inspired um, or like influenced by uh, Amy Lee. Awesome, from Evanescence, yeah. yeah. That's my I, girlfriend's favorite singer. No yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, she's my favorite. Um, I remember, this is back in the day now, but um, I would watch like her AOL sessions and oh stuff God, like yeah. that. And I was just so fascinated by her vocals. And so I was like eight years old and I would try to like mimic her. And so I do, <laughs> I do um, owed my vocal ability to Amy Lee. She doesn't nice. know it at all, but um, she taught me how to sing. Is that like Evanescence? Is that your go-to karaoke? Um. It's not, um, because mostly, you know, I've sometimes we'll do, my sister and I will do like bring me to life or something like that. Like she'll do like the, give her the guy up. part. Yeah. yeah. She always <laughs> does like the hardcore part and I'll sing, but, um, my go-to is usually 1985 by Bowling for Soup. Oh, nice. It's always a good one. It gets yeah. the crowd going. Everybody Definitely. knows it. Yeah. So it's fun. Yeah. We have like a fake pop punk band here at Barstool and we no tried way. to rewrite that as 1999 okay. and it was like fun for like a little TikTok or whatever yeah. and then we tried to do it live and it confused the shit out of everyone because they were like these aren't the lyrics we know and we didn't oh give them a heads gosh. up for it so That's so funny. it didn't go well. Um, you've been touring a ton it seems mm -hmm. like on your Instagram like every post is another tour date <laughs> going back years. Yeah. Um, you've toured with like so many cool bands in the mm -hmm. scene. Any favorite stories from like getting into that? and being kind of a oh newbie on the road, like in this world? Oh, I mean, 
every single band that we've been with, we've been so fortunate. They are, they're just so cool. Like they're so nice and they've been so welcoming. Um, gosh, I'm, there's just so many things that have happened and now all of a sudden my mind is going blank. And now you're on um, a headliner tour. Yeah, and um, now we're doing our own headline. But I will say just like, I mean, the biggest thing that stood out for me was just how accepting everybody was. And I mean, being, I mean, for the first tour that we did, it was myself, the home team with Con. It was their last tour. Um, and then Real Friends. Mm -hmm. And so I was the only female. And it was just like the respect that they gave us and my team and um, also being new to the scene. Like they just, I mean, that's the biggest thing that stood out Big for time. me was just the acceptance. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it was really awesome. What's something about the road that people don't think about, people don't expect? People don't expect. Um, gosh, there's so many things. <laughs> um, I'd probably say, like, for me, like, it's so hard to get adequate sleep. Like, I yeah. just, I mean, we're even in an I'm RV. Sorry, I yeah. mean, no, you're good. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. Um, but it's it's so hard and like to stay healthy, especially like when you're in an RV or like a van with 10 other people, it's so rough. Yeah. Um, and when you're in other people's space that you're not normally in for like a month and, or two at a time, you're on top just, of each other, you're on top of each, of each other. other a little it bit. it yeah. becomes a little bit like sibling rivalry, you yep. know? Um, but it's, I mean, that's, that's really it. Like I, I love being on the road and I love my camp and, um, we have so much fun. So really it's just the lack of sleep, I think is the <laughs> hardest for me. <laughs> what about being in the studio? Do you love being in the studio or do you not like the process? I love it. I think it's so fun. I love watching like, especially songs that I've started on my own come to life. Mm -hmm. Um, I work a lot with this guy, Dan Swank and he's shout just out so Dan, yep. shout All out Dan. Beatle. Yeah. Um, but he's just so talented and him and I, I mean, um, even back in the country days, he played guitar for me and we've always been working together. So it's just really cool to now both be in the scene that we love and creating the music that we are really passionate about. And so just like being in the studio with him, especially, it's just, it's so fun. I love it. You guys just bounce ideas off of each other constantly. Yeah. I mean, I'll, if I'm on the road or if I'm at home, I'll usually like voice memo like record something send it to him he'll like start a track and then once we get together we'll you know and he's so good at lyrics too not just a great producer so I mean him and I we just yeah we just have so much fun with it and we bounce ideas off of each other and it's just a really easy like fun process do you have either a favorite pop punk trope like a hating your hometown type song or something or one you try to avoid on your stuff uh I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. Um, Hating your hometown. I mean, um, I guess not breakup songs because that's a trope for every genre. I mean, I kind of have an open book. You yeah. know what I mean? When it comes to like writing and my writing process. I mean, I write a lot about mental health and I think that's just because it's something that I know very well. I mean, I don't hate my hometown. I did at one point, yeah. but um, everyone goes through that phase. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't really have anything that's like out, like off limits to yeah. write about. You know, that was maybe me trying to just like dig because <laughs> when we try to write our like fake pop punk songs, yeah. we just try to lean into all the tropes. Yeah. So we try to like you know see what the tropes are. Oh gosh, yeah. Them, I right? mean, if I do it, I don't do it intentionally. <laughs> yeah. You got to lean into like stuck at your locker, forgot the combo. Oh yeah. High school, go For back sure. to that kind of stuff. For sure. I would love to go through the EP like track by track yeah, and just get a story from recording yeah. the process or whatever. Starts with sticking around. Mm -hmm. It's a great start to the EP. Did Thank you know you. when you wrote this that it would be like the start it feels like the start of the story oh yeah for sure um it's just one of those songs that just from the get-go is so just like hard-hitting and it's so fun too and i i wanted something to start off the record to be i mean that's always something that i strive for too is to be able to write songs that are sad or meaningful but still have a good vibe to them too you so you don't live, have to be right? yeah like yeah. you don't have to be like sad and in your feels like you can be but you don't have to be the entire time and so um when we wrote that song i knew like right off of the bat i was like this is the first one that we're putting on the record it's 
going to be the, the start to it. And then is this like your opener too? We actually don't play it. Oh, you don't play tour. this one? Mm-hmm. Wow. We, we decided not to play it this run, and I'm regretting it very oh, really? much. Because <laughs> we've had a few fans that were like, are you trying to like make me mad by not <laughs> playing this song? Um, but uh, we we decided last minute because our, our original drummer, um, he was not able to come on tour, and he let us know two days beforehand. Oh, man. So we tried to just like pick songs that a new drummer would be able to kind of um, pick up pretty easily. Our drummer now is, he's phenomenal, but yeah. it was a little bit chaotic at I'm first. I'm sure, yeah. So <laughs> that, we were like, that this is a lot. Us, our, this our last show, our drummer no went way. on his honeymoon. Yeah. Oh, no way. Friggin' guy, so selfish, brought his wife on a honeymoon to Italy Jeez. or something. Yeah. So I called up the drummer of my pop punk band in middle school. No way. Who I haven't played with in 15 years, and he played the biggest show our band's ever played. It was really fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Luckily that. for him, though, we just were, were basically a cover band. Oh. So it was like Good Charlotte, The Anthem, all the small things. Like, I just yeah. send him those songs. He's he like, was yeah. like, I got this. I remember those from middle school. Yeah, yeah I love that. Um, certified Depressant. You said the mm-hmm. first one that was written, so yeah. fitting that it's the title track. Mm-hmm. Um, that one, I was, I mean, I'm going to say this. I've been, I was going re- through it when I was writing this record. Um, that song is really just picking apart who I am as a person and the things that I struggle with on a daily basis. I mean, as an artist, and I'm sure you probably understand this too, but I mean, social media can be so brutal sometimes. Yeah. And when you're an emotional person already and you see people, you know, picking your voice apart or how you look and all these things it it can be like very daunting and like kind of traumatic oh yeah um and it's it's been a really hard thing for me to navigate so um you know I just kind of wanted to talk about that and touch on that and my mental health and those struggles and just you know how I am on a daily basis and um I think that that song it really does tell the story of who I am but at the same time it still has a, like a fun like early 2000s vibe to it yeah is it hard to write songs like that or does it come easy to you uh, it comes easy to me I'm like the queen of self-deprecation that's so good, though. That's, it, <laughs> yeah. it's good that it like it's your way of getting it out kind of yeah yeah, yeah for sure and then I think I'm in love kind of flips mm. it and yeah obviously certified depressant very depressing lyrics yeah. I think I'm in love very happy song mm-hmm. maybe the happiest on the EP yeah probably it is yeah um that's one of my favorite songs to play live um it's so fun everybody kind of they love the the chorus and I think everybody can kind of get involved in it and um that song I uh I had been in a relationship for very many or a lot of very many god bless <laughs> uh it's early it's for early. me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was um in a relationship for a few years and it was like not the best um and I'd gotten out of that and I was like gosh I'm I'm never gonna meet anybody I'm gonna be single forever like I'm totally cool with that and then I met my partner now and he's just the coolest like he skates we both skate together he likes the same music that I do we just I like we're on the same wavelength and I just I never thought that that would happen so um I wrote that song a little premature uh before I actually knew that I was in love and then oh. you know it just kind of happened and nice. uh so this is this is really fitting for me right now, and so I, I felt like it needed to be on the record. Nice shout out to the, yeah. the skater boy king. Yeah, the skater boy. <laughs> um, good enough. I like this mm-hmm. one because it, it kind of like explodes that chorus, that yeah. big, wide, like emotional chorus. Mm-hmm. That one hits very well as like a fourth track too, because the first three you really come out swinging, yeah, and then that one expands it out emotionally. Mm-hmm. Um, that one is probably my favorite on the entire is record. It? I, it is. Are you doing um, that one live? We are. Nice. Yeah. And it's been really, really cool. Um, a girl on my street team printed out these little, it's like these little paper um, squares, but it's kind of like a see-through paper. Okay. And they've been sticking it over their cameras and it's red. So like the whole oh, crowd cool. is like glowing red the first time they did it. I was like bawling. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> um, but I love that song so much. And again, it's just really talking about um, the insecurities that I have and the struggles that I have on the daily. And I think, you know, with social media, everybody posts their highlight reel and they don't really understand like what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just, I felt like that was a a really like powerful thing to put out. And I'm really proud of that one. That's an awesome song and awesome story too. It's cool that your street team did that with the red lights. Yeah, it was so cool. Um, Famous last words. Mm 
very great clapping pattern in this one. You have a couple <laughs> clapping patterns yeah. on this. Is that you? Is that Dan Swank? I think that's Dan Swank. He's the clapper? Yeah, he's the clapper. All right. Yeah, I know what to get him for uh, Christmas. Clap yeah, on, clap off One of those like, little like... <laughs> 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 yeah. Unreal. Mm -hmm. Thank great you. Great song though. Really, Thank really you. cool verses. Really cool chorus. Like famous last words. Shout out my cam a little bit. A little bit and um, a little bit of an ode to uh, the starting line too in there. Nice. I love yeah. the starting line. Yeah, me too. Um, one of the few bass player singers. I yeah. always appreciated that. Right. Psycho. I think Psycho might have been the first one I heard from you. Was this mm -hmm. an early one as well? This was an early one. This was one that um, I... Honestly, like even as a single, I was kind of teetering on whether or not I wanted to put it out just because. Oh, really? Well, I like I'm a very just like kind of calm, shy person naturally. Um, so for me to put out a song like that, even though like those were feelings, genuine feelings that I had at one point, I was always like, ah, I don't know if like this is going to, you know, translate well. Yeah. Um, especially in you know the cancel culture and stuff like that i'm always you like thought very this would get you canceled? i was I, you Come know on. i'm just always so conscious of that and like being respectful to yeah, like people song. well thank you yeah. um but i just i'm people pleaser you know what sometimes i mean you gotta so, throw a brick. Yeah, sometimes and i'm really glad that i i did and i put that song out because i think that it's definitely like a fan favorite and for the girls i mean i they were just like just over the moon and you know people were telling me how much strength it gave them to like leave toxic relationships and stuff I was like I didn't know that this is how it was gonna be but I'm really happy that it um you know translated the way that it did hell yeah, yeah. coma I love the guitar tone and the verses of this yeah. one kind of has like an underwater vibe and then mm -hmm. it, it obviously comes out in the chorus yeah what do you got on coma um, so I wrote that one actually with Dan and Cassidy Pope, which was like Sweet. the coolest thing ever. I was such a fan of Hey Monday back in the day. Yeah. I still am a huge fan of hers. And then I got to actually have her on the new version of Coma, which yeah. um, I can't unhear it like that. I feel like that's how it was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, she was the one who came in with the title of Coma and I could relate to it just so heavily. I was like, yeah, this is this is amazing. Let's write this. Um, we finished it that day. And when Dan sent us the demo, I was like, yeah, this is this is coming out. This is yeah. me to a T. Um, very early, like 2000s, like early Avril vibes. I love, I love like the early 2000s vibe across mm -hmm. the whole album. Was yeah. that a conscious decision to have that kind of all con connected? Well, I just I'm such a fan of like the nostalgia in music. Yeah. And so I wanted to for me i think that that's something that's really important i want people to like when they listen to it to feel like they've almost felt it before yeah but in a new light yeah and so um i i, I mean i want to say it was conscious but i think just like myself as a person and as a writer i'm so drawn to that kind of music in general so it probably just like happened that way as well yeah. I, yeah. Some people in the office were like, oh, who are you interviewing this week? And I was telling them, oh, check out this album. And mm -hmm. the way I would say, kind of sell it to them, I'd say early 2000s pop punk vibes. Yeah. That was like my go-to. Oh. So I like that that was a conscious thing where you're like, early 2000s, yeah. For sure. Um, and then Everything Sucks, a great mm -hmm. way to end it because, you know, Everything Sucks has that nice little flip on it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I love that song. Um, the last tour that we were on, my van broke down. And from then on, I mean, we just had just like a long string of bad luck that tour our trailer opened up we lost a bunch of merch um we were like running around the highway and like in the middle of like arizona almost to new mexico it was oh, like geez. so desolate over there there's <laughs> the like desert. nothing yeah and um so we're like running all over and trying to get our stuff and then literally two days later my van breaks down and we were in a minivan rocking it out for like a week which was <laughs> so humbling how many people in the minivan um i think there was like like six or seven yeah, of us rough. Yeah, yeah it was it was pretty rough um and then I got home and I got like a flat tire immediately because my car had been sitting for, you know, like a month and a half. And so when it rains, it pours. Yeah. And um, I was my when my tire blew when I got home, uh, my partner actually showed up and he you know helped me put the donut on. And I was just, you know, crying. I was so annoyed. I was so upset. I was like, ah, it's just everything sucks right now. And he actually was the one who said, well, everything might suck, but like. I don't and like you have really good fans and like the life that you have right now is really amazing and I was like yeah 
you're right. True. And good um, song. yeah, good, good and song so idea. Yeah. Literally the next day, I went in the studio that with quick. Dan and my best friend Emma, and we we wrote "Everything Sucks" and made it. It was the very last one to make it on the record. Another and so one I like I, I feel like it's a great like narrative ending to mm-hmm. the whole EP. Yeah, I thought for that was sure. really cool. What's your favorite lyric from the EP? Oh man, I think probably from I I mean I. I don't know why it just sticks out to me, but my reflection is my worst critic is my favorite. It's a really good one. Um, I really love that lyric. Well, what about which song goes the hardest live? I think, I mean, does it change every it's night? All, it's all kind of different. It really just depends. I would probably say like shape shifting. Yeah. Um, it's not on the record, yeah. but that one always goes really, really hard. And um, probably I think I'm in love. Like everybody, sings that chorus get clapping and, at the end yeah and like the woes and things like that they're always like there to back me up for those so they yeah. really just get into that one and then i got a little pop punk this or that for you okay <laughs> blink or green day blink okay drum solos or guitar solos oh that's hard probably guitar okay paramore or my chemical romance I'm glad that these are tough. I didn't know they what are. your taste was like going well, in. Well, because, I mean, I love them both so much for, like, different reasons. Yeah. I'll say Paramore just because, like, Haley's my girl. Yeah. I love her. Um, Ocean Ave or Cute Without the E? Cute Without the E. Simple Plan or Sum 41? Simple Plan. And then finally, All Time Low or Fall Out Boy? Hmm. That one is so hard. I love Dan. I'm going to have to say Fall Out Boy, though, because okay. they're the OG. Fair enough. Yeah, the OG. And then finally, I ask all of the artists I interview this question. Mm-hmm. Noel Gallagher from Oasis once said he summed up everything he ever wanted to say with rock and roll star, live forever, and cigarettes and alcohol. Oh, gosh. Do you have three songs that fit that description for you that sum up everything you've ever wanted to say? Um, Jeez. I've I've literally never thought about this. Wow. <laughs> um I'm gonna say um shape shifting is one. Um everything sucks. And then um oh gosh, this is hard. Probably good enough. Maybe. It's a good one. It's good enough. Good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. Um, thank you for coming in. Yeah, thank Obviously, you for you're on tour, me. and you just announced a huge tour for 2024, yeah. so people could look out for tour dates on that. Australia and U.S., mm-hmm. correct? Yep. Where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram, Taylor Acorn Music, uh, Twitter, Taylor Acorn, TikTok, Taylor Acorn One. I think it's that's my handle because you could, if you just type in they it wouldn't in, let me have it. my name. Yeah, you'll find me yeah. somewhere. All right. Thank you so much for <laughs> coming in. Thank you so much for having me. 